Can I proceed? Oh yes, please share your screen and start. Okay. Um, apologies, we don't have lights in our area, so I'll be using okay. my phone. Uh, you can share the screen from your phone, Abby. Yes, yes, I can. Oh, no problem, please. Okay, let me go ahead to share my screen. Okay. Hey. I can't I don't know if you can see my screen. Can anyone see my screen? Yes, it's coming up. Yes, Loading. we can see yeah, your screen. See Please yeah. minimize the things. Yeah, that's fine. Hello. Yes, ma. Sorry. Where you at? Okay, there is a light in the background. Is that you? Yes, ma. Okay. Okay, it's better now. It's okay now. Okay. Um, can we all see my screen now? So I'll be starting with um. The data is not actually here because I'm using my phone. I don't Victoria, have. Are you able to change like to maybe landscape view? That will sort of make it better for us. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is my report. I'll be starting with um. So this particular screen you are seeing is um total sales report. So what I did first was um, to import my data into Power Query. And then I didn't do much of, um, I didn't really edit much of the data because they are quite much. So I decided to um, do my reports by, the first one is um, sales by month and year. I chose this so that we'll be able to see the sales that was made monthly and also by year. Then the second one is um, top two products by sales. So we have Lenovo and um, Dell Latitude. So the second um, slide, the second screen rather is showing us the top two products by sale. The third screen is showing us the sales by category. So we have premium computers, low cost, tablets, monitors and computer monitors. So from here, and I use the pie chart for this sales by category. The premium computers here, we have the one that is, um, that has a larger um, category is premium computers. And that's why I chose the pie chart so that we could actually see the one that is um, more and the one that is less. So it's computer monitors that is less here, going by sales by category. Then my fourth screen is showing us um, the last two products by sales which is the Apple and the Fire HD 8 tablets. So also on my screen, I added a slicer that could filter by either category or month. So if I select, um, let me select tablet. So once I click on tablet, it will filter all of the screens by my selection. So I'll select tablet now. So from here, from the first screen, we can see that um, less than 1 million, 40 tablets in the month of January, there was no sales for um, this tablet category. But for February, March, down to December, they made sales. So if I make um, any other selection here, it's going to filter everything based on you can also see here sales by category. We have um, the category just going to make selection for tablets. So if I filter by month as well, let me select um, we are in the month of March. So there was no sales in the month of March. 
there was no sales in the month of March. So this is all I have for total sales by report. The next screen is um, average in stock by month and year, which is the first screen. So what I just did was that for the my the first the first screen is showing us total sales by month. The second screen is showing us average in stock. Then the third screen is also showing us average inventory on hand projects. So I also added um, buttons on my screen, which could navigate either to the first page or to the second page. Let me go back to the second screen. So the second screen is showing us average in stock reports by month and year for the first screen. Can anyone see my screen? Yeah, we can see. Okay, so this second screen is just showing us um, the average in stock reports for that particular data set. It's still, um, the second one is still also showing the top two products by sales because I want, um, I want them to see the top two products by sales. The third screen is showing us the average in stock by category. Then the fourth screen is showing us the last two products by sales. So that's that about this um, second screen. Then this third screen is um, showing us the average average inventory on hand reports. Sorry, I'm using my phone. That's why I, I, I'm trying to uncheck the months. So the reason why I added um, the slides are category and months is I, I want them to be able to filter by category and months. And that was why each of my um, screen was, is my selection was based by either months or category, aside from the second and fourth screen that is showing the top two products by sales and the last two products by sales. So that's that about this third screen. Then the last screen, which is um, the sports um, report. This was what I could come up with. The first screen is, is I made use of the bar chart. The first, the first um, table is showing us ID by age and sex. So from here we can see the ID by age and sex. The female is the deep blue color that we, we can see here. Then the male is the light blue color. Then the second screen is um, ID by team. Top two team rather, which is France and United States. The third screen is just showing us the ID by sex and we have more of um, male than the female going by the third screen which is which which i actually use the pie chart so we have more females that in the for this particular data set sorry we have more male than females then the fourth screen is showing us id by sports and says so for athletics 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 is the most played game for this particular data set. It's quite much, so I really don't know how to filter it to show. I tried using the top, the last two and the top two, but the last two game was not giving me what I wanted. So that was why I left it this way. So I have to scroll down to for me to see the least played, the least played spots rather. 
So that's that about my report. I don't know if our facilitators have any questions to ask me. Okay, fantastic. Um, facilitators, questions, contributions, and what, what she could have done better. What have you? Any of the facilitators can really go. The participants could ask questions too if there is something yeah. they don't understand. Yes, yeah. actually, participants. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think maybe people can raise their hand if they want to speak so that we're not speaking over each other. So if you have a question to ask Victoria, please. Show of hands. Apologies, I would have prepared using my system, but we are really out of power outage, so that's why I images of my phone. I'll say you did well with your phone, actually. <laughs> Honest. Maybe you'd have done better with your laptop, but you did well with your phone. Thank you, Ma. You're welcome. I'm just looking to the presentation. That's Victoria. Yes, ma. Okay, I think it was a good presentation. Well, I'm actually reading from my phone, but I also okay. think maybe um, understanding the different types of um, what we call visuals. There are other visuals that that can tell. Um, I can tell the story faster. You okay. know, uh, although for this, this is actually the beginner's class. What, uh, what I actually love is looking at the visuals and being able to pick up quick insights from it, you know, even without ex um, further explanation. I don't know if you get my point, but I, also, I think it was a good, yes. good presentation. Thank you so, so uh, much. That just shows us at least we. Uh, we're, we're, we're wasting our time. But I think you do better this um, presentation. Yeah. Thank you very So, any other questions for Victoria? Does anybody have any question for Victoria? Is there other person on call now? Who's the? Okay. Um. So before we leave, um, Victoria's um. Before we leave, Victoria's like just to um a few things i wanted to say so um on page what's that page on page one on your column okay. charts where you have top two product by sales and last two product by sales it might okay. just be helpful to add a data label like you have on the pie chart that gives oh. us, like, we can see this 50K on the X axis, but it doesn't exactly tell us what the number is for Apple iPad. Oh, okay. Until we okay. hover over it. When we hover over it, I can see that, oh, Apple iPad is 72K. But it's better if the number is just there, we can see it. Oh, okay. um, also, so the same thing for slide two, you also have column charts there. Then the last thing I wanted to say is around um, this on the sports place. Two things okay. here. 
First is the naming conven convention. So when you say ID by team, someone is going to start asking or oh, ID by age and sex. It is because you did the reports, you know that ID there means the number of the participants. Yes. The count of the ID, because the ID was a unique identifier for the participants. So you had to use ID, but then you could have yes. changed the title to say participants or count of participants by age and sex. Okay. So now that goes for all of the visuals on that sheet. Participants by team, participants by sex, and the participants by team. Uh, I'm not sure that a hundred percent stacked bar chart was the best choice of uh, of visual to use because a hundred percent stacked chart is quite like a bar chart. Oh, sorry, like a pie chart, but pie in colors. Okay. You want to show that the two of them make up a whole. But in this case, they don't exactly make up a whole. I assume what you were saying here was the top two teams or something. Yes. So the top two teams, um, a 100% a stack chart will not do it. The normal column chart, for example, I'm trying to see if I can share my screen. A normal column chart would make us see each of them individually and then with a data label that tells you, let me just click share my screen and show what I just did. Okay, should I stop sharing my? Uh, I think it will stop once I start. So. Can stop though, just so it makes life easier for us. Okay. Few seconds, please. So, can we see my screen? Yes, I can. Good. So now this shows us which is um, France and which is United States. Then, just like I said for the others, you can then add a data label that shows um, things hanging. Can I add a data label that shows what the exact number is? for each of them. Okay. So uh, anyway, you can see it's when we cover, but without covering, you can just add it. Where's the edit? Okay, Let's see what I'm looking for. From here, data labels on. So that way we can see exactly what the number is for each of them. Oh, okay. Of course, a bit of um, you, you are here and there, maybe increasing the fonts of your headings and all of this, just so that people can see it better. But aside that, did a fantastic job. Thank you, Ma. Thanks for the correction as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I will stop sharing my screen. Next presenter is supposed to be the first presenter, actually. Blessing. Blessing or Shade. I don't know which one of them is her name. Is she on the call? Bless me, are you on the call? I can't seem to see her. If Blessing is not here, maybe Lara should go. Lara, I can see you on the call. Lara, please share your screen and show us what you got. Lara, are you there? Yes, I am. Good evening. Good evening, Lara. Please give me a moment to do that. Okay. Okay, Lara, I was here. I couldn't open your report. I don't know why. 
and the link that you shared you didn't grant me access so so i didn't hear that properly the link i said i couldn't open your report i don't know maybe it's because i've not updated my power bi so oh. i wasn't able to open it so you can just share your screen and talk us through all right thank you yes My presentation is coming up. Um, it's taking some time to load. Okay, we're waiting. While we're waiting for Lara, please, if anybody has any questions um, on what we have done or even on what Victoria presented, please feel free to ask so that we don't just um, spend the time looking at each other's faces. Okay, good evening. Good evening, Eno. Yeah, okay. I was wondering where she got the um, sports data from. I'm not sure I saw that. So, um, I think let's just say that she did. I won't call it over syllabus, but so you remember that I said I uploaded two files. One was Power BI Project, and the second was Power BI Project uh, 2. So, what I had said was that you should choose one of them to use for your project. So you were supposed to do one of the two, not the both of them, but she chose to use both of them. Okay. So, and Eno, I think you also submitted your report this morning, even though I did not send you an email that you were going to present. But if you feel like you want to present, 
think we can still take you since we have some time on our hands. I, so we I can didn't either, add any of the, prepare. is it the slicer and all those um, end it parts? Doesn't mean you can because, show us what you have. <laughs> because I didn't quite uh, I get back that question, you so I'm yet to, to watch the video. So, I remember that you said so in your email. Mm. Well, it's fine. You can just show us how far you went. Okay. Are you on your system now? Yes. yes you can start while we wait for Lara to come up. If you're able to share your screen. As I was able to open Lara's report, I will even share it for her. Okay, Lara is up now. So, Enno, you go okay. after Lara. Good evening. Good evening, Lara. Okay. Finally. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, so, please, I'll start with the... Um, Appending and merging. Is all okay. that fine? Definitely. Okay. So for the appending, I had used data from. Um, I changed. I renamed the column headers so that I could have very similar headers. So I got the columns from these three data sets, that's Manchester data set, Leeds data set, and Liverpool. And so well, this, had... is, this was the data set that we used in class, yeah? Yes. Okay, okay. Um, okay, I'm starting with this because I observed something while I was working and I would like to, I don't know if it's a common occurrence, but I would like to mention it so that in case anybody had come across such, because it kept me um, I think I was a bit stranded for, for like 30 minutes to one hour, but I really wanted to sort it out. So I eventually got it sorted out. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> so I use these three data sets, Manchester, Leeds, Liverpool, to get this append. Um, so what had happened is um, each of them, Manchester, for example, I have five columns, um, Leeds, I have four columns and Liverpool, I have four columns. And we observe that um, after appending, we eventually had five because the, the one that has the most um, columns is actually five. And that's from that's from Manchester. So what will happen is the ones that don't have any any information on them, that will be under dates paid. Would we'll still know under under um, that information, and before you even see that, when we I don't know if you can see my cursor. Yeah, we can see. Yes. So that on the cursor here, if you check from staff, I have it to be green. Um, it's showing hundred percent. That means everything is valid. Second is valid. Third is valid. Then this date paid is showing me that some are empty. Um, the ones that are empty signify um, the the columns from the data sets that do not have values for dates dates paid, and so that's why I have a bit of um, it's not an error, but it's because it's showing zero error. So just just to show you that okay, you're just you're on the path, you're on the right path. So 73 73 percent is valid and 27 percent is empty, meaning that it's showing no values. So if I use the filter. Um, you see the ones that are null. Uh, let me see. You see the ones that are null. And so those ones come from the other data sets that have just four columns. So um, that is one way to at least check that you are doing the right thing. The fact that it's showing that there's no error, but then um, it's there's 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 room for the ones that are null and rooms for the columns that are filled up. So um, one Sarah, thing that was not to yeah? cut you short. Can you hover on if you hover on that um that green this green line? Yes. You can actually sort of click um there's a way you click 
on that green line, it shows you, um, what do they call that in column properties? Column properties, okay, let me see. Um, is it here? Yeah. Okay, don't worry, just continue, I'll come back to that. Okay. Because this thing you are saying, like the Power BI can actually show you, like and tell you, let you know what percentage of your data is null and what have you. But just yeah, yeah, I said that. Um, I mentioned that that it was 73 percent was. Yeah, like I wanted you to show show it, let people. Oh, see. right, right, right. Okay, um, it's no longer showing. I'm wondering why. Let me see if I can get it. Okay, yes. So this is, this is. I don't know if this is what you're referring to. Yeah, we can't see. Did you share your screen or your window? I'm sharing my screen. Not window. You know the difference between window and screen. Okay, so let me do that again. Just give me a moment to share my window, right? No, you should be sharing screen and not window. Screen share. Okay. Um, how's it now? Yeah. So I don't know. It's, yeah, exactly. We can see you now. <laughs> this was what I wanted you to show. So this sort of shows you this what is called column properties. You can see which ones are empty, which ones are normally if some of them are like maybe the wrong format or something, it will show as error. But here it's showing as empty. So it's not a problem, but it just lets you know that hey, these cells are empty. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so that's for the append. And um I went on to do merge. So I merged the data for the data set for general data and personal. Um, okay, so what I had observed in this, okay, yes, yeah, so this is general data. I'm sorry for going forward. This is general data. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, up to last checkup columns. And then personal data, um, it has up until CC expires column. So when I had when I did the first data merge, um, I had everything showing up until um, CC expires. And then on the second one, what I had, it just stopped on. Um, so I'm trying to. Where is it not going? Oh dear. Okay. Yeah, so it stopped in general data. Um, it stopped in CC expire. So what I first thing I had observed is I was wondering what this was for. Um, you know, I was wondering why I had this after I had merged. I expected to see all of the information from the two data sets merged into one um one big column and one new information until I clicked on this and then I noticed that okay, if I clicked on this the information would further expand into what I wanted to see. Either I wanted to see all of it or some of it. So that was one thing I learned while doing this. So if I click on everything, I mean, I just have a more expanded data. So should now show all of the columns in general data. So the first part of it that is this, the end here is for personal, is for this data set. While this one with the yellow is for general data sets. So, and then even the column headers is also showing us that the column is was imported from, gen, uh, from general data, just in case probably still need to make some adjustments here and there before proceeding to 
or depending on what you want to show yes depending on what you want the story you want to tell with your data set so um please let me quickly share another thing i had learned while i was going through this so please before i come back to the other project with the um, athletes information which is this one i had to them just please share what i another thing i learned very very fast Okay, so I'm going to bring up that data now. Um, lessons learned. So even if um, I, cause the other one for the slicers and for the charts, I don't know if it was very fantastic. However, I made an effort, but I know that these two, I I put some, I I and I I spent some time in it just trying to understand how it works and trying to debug any form of error that I may find across. The, Lara, you are speaking too many English. <laughs> no, what my information is coming up. My screen is coming up. Let's go hot. You are going to be a mentor. I'm impressed with, I mean, all of the things that you even found on your own while you were doing your stuff. Okay, so great. Um, So um, remember I shown you the um the data for that's the appended data the appended, for, yeah. yes leeds liverpool manchester and then uk which now gave me a new name which i called uk office expense because i imagine that i mean leeds liverpool manchester they're all citizens in the united kingdom and then maybe it's, uh, send us an information regarding something that happened in that office so see it is showing well very very well and so if I now decide that this is my data, I want to move it because I want to rearrange my table, for example. I now take these three, these three um, data sets, I put them in another location, which is, for example, on my main desktop. And then I go back to my Power BI. Let's say I go back to my Power BI to save, to check what I'm doing. Um, where is it again? Okay. So let's say I save. So let me close and open it again. My information is coming up, please. Okay, we're waiting. So you use the, the same data for your visuals. You didn't use the project data. Oh, I did. I used it. I used the. I used it. So you are sure you are going to show us that one later. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, Okay, so what I wanted to show is going to come up now.
I'm trying to move this into a new folder so that um, we'll see the error I got when I was trying to do it. Okay, let me see if it's sure. Uh, okay, it's not showing again. Right. Okay, let me just share one more time. Can you explain what you said, what the error was? Okay, so the error was, by the time I opened my Power BI again to continue working on the data sets, I didn't see anything. It was just showing empty, um, source not found, um i had this yellow error sign and so i didn't actually know what to do next so no nothing was now showing on my system there was no it was all yellowed out there was no information showing on that experience nothing was showing on that um what's it called uk office uh, okay, the error is not coming up again. Hmm. Right. Just go straight to your visual. Let me just go straight. Okay, so for this. Lara, are you trying to get to the visual? Hello, Lara. Yes, um, this is my visual. <laughs> uh, so, can you see this? Uh, yes, we can see. Yeah. Okay, so this is um, for which of the data? This is for the one of the athletes, the sports. Okay, the data. sports data. Yes, athletic event report. Okay. Yes, I have the image, the logo of text that has. Um, I used Q and A for this one. I wanted to know what event had the most medals in the competition. <clears throat> there was a tie for all of these events. Um. Oh, do I need to show the table first? Hello? Hello? You don't need to show the table. Just talk through the visual. All right. Okay, so the table contains a list of athletes from different countries that participated in um, different events. 
at different times of the year. We have the summer, um, summer games and then the winter games. Um, they're represented from different countries. So this, <clears throat> this part here um, that is showing city is showing where most of the participants were from. They were from North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, virtually all, all the continents of the world were represented there. I use the map, um, this particular visual called map here, that's field map, just to show representation of the countries that were in the competition. Okay, so this one is the q and A. I wanted to know what event had most medals in the entire competition. And then um, most of the competitions had a maximum of four medals starting from the ones with A down to the last one. Um, I also used a pie chart to help me know the count of athletes by athlete ID, by gender. Um, so the purple is female, 25% of the entire participants were female, and then 74.9% um, of the participants were male. That's the, um, that's the blue. That's what I had represented in the pie chart here. So this one is this one is the first year. I wanted to know when the event started at all because I had different years up to 1990. I wanted to know what year the event even started anyways. It started in 1896. So based on um Based on the medals that had been won, I'm going to the next visual. Based on the medals that had been won, I wanted to know what was the likelihood of medals by age of the participants because some people had some people had no medals, some had a lot of medals. I wanted to just know if it was an age issue or what was the top, what was the key influencer for people who had won uh, medals. So those that had those that were aged above 57 or 57, they had a 1.13 likelihood of winning the medals um, down to some people's ages were not captured. Um, while those that were 24 years old um, below, they had the least likelihood to get medals in the games. Um, and then I had to just wanted to know whether it was an age issue that or maybe it was a country issue that influenced winning of medals as particular about age. And so <clears throat> based on um let me go to the next page. I don't waste too much time. I wanted to know the number of people that had passed the difference in athletes that had the count of athletes that have participated in summer games versus winter games. For obviously, this is summer games here. We had a lot more participants, about 116,000 participants. While during the winter games, we had less participants. So we, I can infer that to mean that is either we had less sport activities in winter because of the cold, or people didn't just countries didn't just show up because of the weather. Um, so it's just going to, I will now have to further drill down to why we had less participants, which is a lot, is hundred is even more than 100% less than people that had shown up during summer games. Okay, so the, um, my next visual is, um, I wanted to see, for my next visual, I wanted to see a table. I use table here, table visual here. To also know the count of participants, because um, the first one I had done, I wanted to know those particular countries with medals as well. Um, so I didn't do any particular sorting. It was just sorting by country. But if I proceed to, um, so some countries had just one medal. Some countries, like if I want to check Albania during the whole of the event, they had just one medal. Um, some countries like Algeria, for example, had four medals. Um, so <clears throat> that's actually where I stopped in my 
visual because I yeah I had a bit of challenge I had I have a question from this do um, okay let's hear your question before people ask you questions hello Hello, Lara, are you there? You're breaking off. I can't hear you. I'll try to get proper an individual's phone if it's sent to the person. So it starts with the company logo, athletic events for the year. And then um, once I scroll, the information pops up um, as we as we, as we scroll down to the spots that represent you said you had a question so i was telling you to ask your question hello can you hear me and now can you hear me hello you are breaking up you are breaking up hello uh i can hear you but you're breaking up okay oh, can you hear me now yes, yes. we can hear you now Okay, so, so I was I saying that you said you had a question. Here. Sorry? You were saying that you had a question. Yes, I do. I have a question. Um, so I, this is my slicer. Um, first question is, what would have been more, most appropriate for me to use as a slicer in this kind of data? Because I had, there are so many spots represented and for example, this is aeronautics. Um, I was saying that they had just one medal. It was mostly males that were that participated. The first year is 1936. It wasn't like totally captured in all of the all of the visuals. For example, okay, like so yeah. So your question so is first, after that first question, then I'll go to the second question. So it's usually advisable for slicers to use um, a data point that doesn't have a whole long list of people don't have to continue scrolling, scrolling, scrolling to get it defeats the purpose because then I have to click like 20 things to see each of them I get. So in this case, maybe something like male and female gender would have been a better slicer or something that just has it's not a rule like is not a written rule anyway, but it's just best practice. Because when you have a slicer that has 20 or 25 points, and you have to click each of them one after the other to see all of the points, it, it doesn't make um, user experience good. So if you have something that has maybe just five points, or even two or three, like that, yeah. those are the kind of things that you use in slicers. And like I said, in this case, you could have used um, the gender as a slicer, then you can always slice for male and female. Okay. Thank you. Um, next question I want to ask is, so I was trying to understand, um, let me, let me expand it a little. So the data has, um athlete ids some athletes participated in more than one event for example so i wanted to know the actual count of athletes that came for the event that's one and meaning that i do not want to get to count one, one athlete. athlete two times yes exactly that's and then i wanted to know performance of that athlete you understand maybe okay that one first of all I, I so when you select that. your when you select your ID, can you go to your 
go to where's the where's the visual that has the id of the athletes or the counts uh i don't quite have one because it didn't come out well it was just blank can you create one right now just drag the athlete id just drag the athlete id to you and why do you have some <laughs> Does anybody know why there is a sum in front of the athlete ID and how we can solve it? Yeah, I can solve it. Okay, sorry, not me. Right. No, if you can solve it, then fix it. Like, you know, but you know that you're not supposed to have some here. Oh, okay. That because be it's not a number that we're trying to add. Okay. Let me... So let me explain what this means to you. So when you imported your data, the athlete ID is a number, yes. So Power BI sees it as a number and it formats it as a number. And when it formats anything as a number, what it means is that it's going to add it up whenever you select it. It's going to either add it up or find the average of it. But because you know that athlete ID is not the kind of number that you want to add up. You have to change the format. Either you change the format to text, or the other way to go about it is in the properties. You can say don't summarize. But since you have, you have changed it to text, so let's just go back. So no, let's please go. show me the other one. <laughs> the other way. Is, here. The other way is not here. Is in um come out from save and apply. Okay. I think we'll, we'll do that for height, since you still have your height as a number. Go back, go close and apply. Close and apply. Come to your data view. Here. You know where your data view is now? I'm clicking on it. Okay, okay, it's coming. <clears throat> where is the one that has the height? Now go to that column that has height. Okay. There's a height column. Height. Click on that column. Yeah. Good. Can you see format whole number? You really can leave it as all of that. But you come to this summarization under this column too. Okay. Okay. Can you see summarization up here? Yes. Click the drop down. Oh, okay. Click the drop down and say don't summarize. Again, yeah, she's like you're sharing your window, not your screen. Because I can't see the pop up. Have you seen don't summarize? Yes. Click the don't summarize. Okay, there's no don't summarize. Click count, change it to count. I think this is okay. new Power BI update. There should be count or count these things. So yeah, there's count these things. So use count these things. So now you know the difference between count and count these things. Um, okay, count these things will mean count per person or count exactly. by so, ID. So you know that you were saying that some athletes performed maybe at two, three different events. So their ID will occur three, four times. Yeah. So if you count, if you just use counts, an athlete that performed four times will be counted four times. So you have like a wrong figure for the count. But if you use count these things, even though the athlete performed four times, it's going to be counted only once. Okay. So these are the two ways to solve um, when you have a number that is not exactly a number that you want to be added up. You can either change the format to text or you come here and change the summarization method so that it should not sum it. The okay. only thing the only thing with using this method of changing the summarization is that when you get back to your visual, like in that year you were able to do first, last and maximum, minimum the only thing you'll be able to do, because they have selected count distinct, the only thing you'll be able to do now is count distinct. 
so now for so now atlet id because we have changed it to um number have you as your have your steps been applied because i don't know why this height is still showing so yeah don't go back to power query we don't have the time just um so now you have your count of athlete id but now come and check you have to now change it to distinct count click back on the visual um, i'm sorry i'm trying to get a card i think that will show it perfectly. yeah card. And, and i want you to change it to distinct so so uh, under the drop down the drop down in count of athlete id change i think you should still have distinct counts there where is the work card again see card here mm. now under visualizations see card under this pie chart under pie chart okay under pie pie chart. Chart. Thank you. Okay, so I want to know how to put that thing, for example. So you know you can change this one that you already have to a card instead of trying to create another visual. Uh, okay, just yeah, I think on um, I click think Shanto was doing it the other day, but I didn't. Yeah, no, just click it. on it and then click card. Okay. Change this. Oh, to great, card. great, great. Oh, thank yeah. you. So now come back to the to the paint to the distance to the fields and change it from count to a distinct count. Okay, so I have 135 now against 200. Fantabulous. We will not be able to take all, your, all of your questions, Lara, because I want yes, to take it's, Eno's, it's fantastic. I want to so take Eno's presentation. So Thank we'll you. still be on the group and on the WhatsApp listing for all of your questions. Eno, are you ready for us? I'm stopping the sharing. <clears throat> Anna, are you there? Hello, Anna Bong. Anna, are you there? Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, sorry, let me try and share my screen. Okay, we're waiting. I don't know if you can see my screen. Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, so I started with the the sales data. And, okay. Um, yeah, and the first two, um, the dirty one, and the project. Okay. So I put all those together, and um, this this first um, visual was just to show. Um, which of the products was sold uh, mo mostly? So it okay. has the, um, um, the the first portion is showing you the average inventory on hand, what is um, the sales, how much of it was sold. Okay. So from this we can see i think the premium computers sold more 
than all the other items. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's uh, what I was able to pull out of here. And then <clears throat> the, the cost, I was just trying to go, you know, deeper just to find out what else I can pull out of, of this. I, I hovered on something, but I can't figure it out again. <laughs> and it showed me. What do you mean cost. by the cost? Okay. And did you put the cost as a two tip or something? Um, let me check. Maybe it wasn't this one. No, this scroll, no scroll down on the this at this place. Here on the no 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 this visualizations pane sorry scroll down we'll see if you have the access maybe as a bd okay. costs maybe as a tool tip there's no cost here maybe it's on another visual okay so um then on this um, other one, I was still trying to figure out um, how to navigate. Hmm. So, <laughs> this one is very busy. This, this one is quite busy. It's just showing all of the, the states that had the, the products. But then I also noticed something. There was um, a step you showed us where the spelling of states was wrong, and I tried to change that when I was um, cleaning up my data. But when I came back here, I found that it didn't change. I don't know why. Why did you change it? Is the spelling um, of a state or the, the spelling of the whole theory. column? Pardon? Is it the spelling of one state or the spelling of the whole column? Okay, the column header. The word state. State. The column header. Spells, and then there was one um, one of the states. I think Imo had something on it, but that one changed. But the the word state was still showing wrongly spelled. So I don't know why. Let's let's yeah, do okay, it again. This one here. I don't know why that happened. Let's let's do it again. Can you go to your data view? Here, click on this um, this thing that looks like a box on the left, close to city. This is a data view here. Yep. Okay. Which of these tables has that column? Is this sales or table one? Uh, I can't remember. Not, I think it's sales. Check sales. Now you can check all of them. It's obviously not stable one, so check sales. I think it was the last. Let me check. It's not this one. Okay, yes, it's this one. It's this one. So double click on that state. Change it. Enter. Voila. It's, it's changed now. Go back it's, to your visual. This one. Okay. Can you show us the third, the third visual? Yeah, we will quite come back to this. Okay. So this this one had um, the items listed. Okay, sales, average and inventory, and in stock percentage. And it's also showing us how much sales has been made so far out of all the stock. This um, in stock percent is not appearing. It's not showing. <laughs> you don't know why it's not showing. So I'll, I'll show you, I'll tell you something. 
go back to your first page. Let's go back to. Go back to back to report. Yeah. Question. Yeah, but just no. The back to okay, report. Okay, back, back to report. report. Okay. My first question is: Why did you decide to clump all your visuals on one page? You know, each of them can actually have their own page, and then you can zoom it and we can see it properly. Yes, I I didn't remember that when I was doing it. Okay, <laughs> now that we are here, create create page two and page three and put each of them on one page. Just copy and paste. Come here, copy the visual. Paste it here. I'm not, a, I'm not able to paste. I don't know. Can you use Control V? It's not responding. Okay, I'm going to go back again. Okay. Oh, you know what? Duplicate yeah. the page. Duplicate page one two times. Okay. Okay, it has pasted now. Another work would be just to duplicate the page two times and then you delete you delete the ones you don't want from those other pages. Okay, so I can duplicate the page. Duplicate right? page one, yeah. Okay, exactly. and delete so the you delete the one you don't that. want from here. Um how do I delete this? Just use the delete on your computer. Okay. That's not the one you are deleting here. Control Z, you deleted the wrong one. Um, okay. You are deleting this, the one down here, exactly. So go back to page one. To page one? Don't, don't, don't do this focus thing. Go back. You can't work on your reports as you are in this place. So the best way to do it is, so delete these other ones. I want to use the first report to explain Delete the other two. Click on this one and expand it. Don't use that focus. Expand it so that we can see it. Come to this corner and expand it. Expand it, let's occupy the whole page. And the first thing I want to um the first thing I want to say is so the visual that you used here for this report is a clustered column chart. Now I want to say that clustered column charts are better used when the data points that you are trying to compare are very similar to each other. And what I mean by very similar is that the numbers are not far away from each other. So okay. for example, you have average inventory on hand, and then you have sales, then you have week number, week ID, then in stock percentage. Can you do something? Can you can you duplicate this page one again? I want to because I want to show you what I mean by the numbers being similar. Good. Click on this visual. I like this visual and change it to a matrix. Can you see this? Um, the visual beside R, just before mm -hmm. R. Beside? Just before R. This R. This one. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, can you see average inventory on hand for premium computers is 324,000. Sales is 92,000. In stock percentage is 7,000. Week number ID is 8. Number one, what I mean by being similar 
is that so for example average inventory on hand and maybe sales they are speaking to the same thing but week number id is is a date is not necessarily speak to, speaking to the same thing so number one week number id should not be i'll take it off should not be with those things on a clustered bar chart okay then the second thing is that the second thing about them being similar is if you're using a clustered bar chart it's better if the numbers are not too far away from each other what will happen when the numbers are too far away from each other is what happened in it became worse on your third on your third visual on page three or is also on go to the main page one so the reason why we can barely see the purple ones is because by the scale the premium computers are really big but this other one, the number is really small. So how is it going to show it? However, if or in cases where you really have to show the two of them and the scale is different, there's also a way to go about it. And there's something called a secondary axis. Now go to your go to your visual Spain. Click on the visual. Click on the visual first. Okay. Now go to your visual pane. And drag this, drag this arrow down a bit. Remove the week number ID first. Okay. Now come, scroll down a bit. Scroll down. I want to. No, I mean scroll. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Scroll down. by that axis. The scrolling down by that. This visualization pane. No, not yeah. there, not there. The visualization pane. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, scroll down. No, no, this is not what I want to achieve. Um, go to, I'm coming. Can you click this down arrow on in stock percentage? In stock percentage. The arrow. Oh no, here, here, yeah. Here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, this not one. here. The arrow. The arrow on the. I don't know. Can I request control? Uh, let me see. Okay. If I would be able. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, okay, it's not here. Let me see. Maybe it's here. So what I'm trying to do is we can create a secondary um, a secondary y axis so that the bigger guys will have their own axis and the smaller guys will also have their own axis. So should be somewhere here. So, so, so axis. What axis is y axis? I'm coming. Hold on a little. I'm kind of struggling to. <laughs>
Is that me? Can you stop sharing your screen? It's gone off. We are seeing um, the meeting now. Thank you. I think maybe you clicked something. No. Um, okay, I know. Yes, please. Maybe, maybe maybe you should reshare your screen. Yeah. Yes. Uh, reshare your screen. Can, can you see it now? Not yet. It's coming up. Can you see it now? Not yet. Are you sharing your entire screen? Yes. Not showing you. Okay, it's come up now. Inka, you still? Inka, yeah, you I'm there? coming. Yeah, I am. Oh, oh, oh okay. Uh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay, so um, do I still have control? No. No, I think it's uh -huh. okay. So I can't seem to find the secondary access, but what I can do is if I change this to, um, even though a line chart is not the best thing here, yeah. well, because um, I can't find what I'm trying to show on the cluster chart. A change is to a line chart. You've not given me control, have you? I have. Average inventory, sales, and in stock. Okay, so you see what I'm saying? In this case now, the in stock is looking like it's just a flat line. Whereas it's really not a flat line, but because it's too small to show on this scale. Now, if you come here and move this in stock from here to secondary values, okay. you see how it suddenly jumps up. That's mm -hmm. because it now has its own axis. Can you see this axis on the right here showing in stock percentage, which has a smaller scale? Can you see the difference in the scale? Yeah, you have zero, 50 meters, 100, 100 million, sorry, 100 million, 150 million. But this has a smaller scale now, 1K, 2K, that like he's now allowing her to flex her own muzzle too. He's no longer showing as a flat line that looks like it's not changing. Okay. So I know that this secondary axis should be available on the column charts, but I couldn't seem to find it. So that's the way if you insist on showing two figures that are, Sort of far apart from each other. That's the way to go about it. But if you show it on the same axis, like you did here, where's the chart that was here? Okay, like you did here. What will happen is that one of them, it will just look as if it's non-existent. And that's because the scale is really too big for it. The particular one I'm looking for is okay, it's here. The in stock percentage here, you said it wasn't showing at all. And that's because, like I said, it's it's too small for that scale. So it's not that it's not there. For example, if you come here, probably see. Also, anyway, um, this in stock thing, just like the same thing that I said here, 
two things. It is a percentage, so you are not even supposed to add it. What has happened here is that you have added it. So because it's a percentage, and these ones are absolute numbers, yeah. even if you want to visualize them together, like I said, they have to be on different scales, and then you're not supposed to add it. So let me... Let me come... When you have percentages, the best way to um, to show or to summarize them is usually to average them, not to add them, not to add it. You can't add it. If you are, if you are adding it, you are definitely getting something that is not correct because you are in stock percentage now. Something that is supposed to be a percentage is now showing as 1,000. I mean, percentage cannot be 1,000. So if you come here, you see the summarization is showing sub, which is not supposed to be so. So you change it to average. It will now look like what percentage should look like, I assume. OK, so in all cases. You cannot fun. you cannot add percentages okay. just like just like you're in school and they said, oh, you got 90 percent in math and 80 percent in English. And they're like, what's your, what's your average, what's your overall average score? They are not going to say 90 plus 80 and say 170%. You're going to find the average of 90 and 80. So I think the reason why this is also showing like this is because here should have been changed to percentage. So looks like percentage. So it's true that we always have good amount of this thing in stock. Okay. So this should refresh. Because it cannot sum percentage. So yeah, that's just it. But again, the best the best um, situation is not to show percentage together with things like sales, except you're showing it on another axis or on another um, this thing. And there are better visuals to show percentages than um, than a line chart or a column chart. Yeah, OK. So I, I'll need to walk around you know, the visuals, just trying them for out. Example, some, if some you use, I didn't, for example, uh, if you use a gauge, to show percentage. Trying to drag. Okay, I drag this into this place again. If you use a gauge to show percentage, is a perfect, is a perfect visual. So okay. you can see ninety seven percent. But this is now showing for everything. Then you can now filter for different products and what have you. So same thing here. Okay, before we go, we still have like twelve minutes. I'll just quickly talk about this one. So this visual literally doesn't tell anybody anything. So first thing is that you can't put um, city as a legend. Just the same way you can use um, something that has 20 data points as a slicer. Because that's why all of this is now plenty like this. Like we can barely get any information out of it. So the first thing is to remove the city from the legend. Okay. This tells a better story. If you insist that you want to do something by city, you, you have to maybe like do another visual and do, or you can even put city as, for example, um, okay, you have brand name, then you have state. So you haven't drilling down safe. Drilling down. 
drill down to state. So you can still have city under there, then drill down to city. So where's the city? It's on top. Yeah. And simply the city here. So you have um, three levels of hierarchy. So after states, you can then drill down again. Sorry. Drill down again to city. So we're now at the lowest level, Abakaliki, Ilori. Then you can go back up all the levels. And as a bonus, I will do one visual that is also another better way to show stuff that have lots of hierarchies, which is a decomposition tree. I change this to a decomposition tree. Now, is it price you started from a brand? Oh, okay. Yeah, I have to explain with something. Brand name. Brand name. Go to city. State, sorry. From states, you can pick any of the states. You go to city. That's another way to show data that has hierarchies. So I think we've done quite spent quite some time on this. Thank uh, you. And of course, data labels are very important. Like even if you have your axis, data labels means that, like we have always said, the purpose of visualization is that people can see what you need them to see as fast as possible. People don't have to come and hover over these points to see if you just check the data labels on. Somewhere here is it. Okay, I think let's check the data labels on. It's almost always best practice to have your data labels on, except if the visual is already so busy. If not, it's usually better. Just make sure that you put them in a format that is not occupying the whole space. So that's that. Does any other person have questions for her contribution and what have you? I've talked too much today. People have made me to talk. Please, can you show that decomposition again? <laughs> this one is advanced class, so I just had oh, to do small okay. bonus for her. But don't worry, I'll just go there. Oh, I've already, I've already dropped control. Um, Anna, can you go to the decomposition tree page? Hello. Hello. Can you go to the the composition tree page? I think is this duplicate of duplicates. Uh, okay. One of them, sure. Oh, okay. It wasn't here. No, it wasn't here. Was the other? Okay. Yeah. Okay. This one. This just shows like, where you have hierarchies. So we had this hierarchy. Click the visual so that you can see. It. We had this hierarchy of from brand name, state, and city. So what are you trying to analyze? The price. What this means is that it breaks down the price to so which which brand has the highest price. Even though when you click on the plus, it asks you whether you want to show the highest or you want to show whatever. So you can see all the brands. You can see all the brands from the highest to the lowest price. And then you can click on any of the brands. There will, there will be a plus in front. Let me just request the control again and quickly show you. So, like I said, because we had this hierarchy of brand, city, and states, that's why it works like this. 
when you come here to this plus it will ask you do you want him to highlight the high value or the low value or you want him to just show you all the brands if i say highlight the high value it will still show me all the brands but then it will highlight the highest one as you can see this fabricum or something is bolder than the whole others which means it's highlighted now all of these have plus so i can decide to um drill down on any of them if i drill down on this if i want to drill down on this one i click this plus here this star you already know that it's going to go to state but i can actually jump the state hierarchy if i want and go to city yeah but i won't do that i want to just show you the low value so if i pick um say worldwide importers this time around i want it to highlight the low value I'll click this low value. So can you see it started from the lowest? Because like maybe the list is very long. The cities are a lot. It will start from the lowest and then it will highlight. Can you see that this bouchy is bold? The others are not bold. So it started from the lowest. The other time I did it, I actually, the default is highest. So if you just pick city and you don't say highest or lowest or whatever, it will default to show you the top top seven or top how many the charts can show. And you can use this down arrow to keep going down to the end. Then if you click plus here, you get to the last hierarchy. Let me use low value here again. So to highlight the lowest. So that's how um, this thing, but because we've not really done hierarchies, I think that's why we didn't touch on this because it might confuse people. Because you need to have a hierarchy for you to use, for you to use this. But like I was showing, it's just about the same thing that we did here. The difference between this one and that is just that that one, you can see all the levels of the hierarchy at once. But with this, you can only see one level at a time. So when you go like this, here we're in brand now, then we'll go down. You go down to state. Which one am I using, Jerry? Go down to state, and then you go down to city. So this one, you can only see one level at a time. But with this, you can see how it's breaking down, breaking down, breaking down. Any other questions on this or something else that we've done? Or questions for Eno? Questions for Eno? No question. Anyways, if there are no other questions, we have just seven minutes left on the clock. Someone saying something. Um, those of you that have not submitted your project, um, I'm in a very good mood. So please feel free to continue to send your project to me whenever you complete it. Hopefully it will not pass this week because I'm not going to have another demo anyway. But if you send it to me, I can look at it and um, let you know what my thoughts are around what you have done. So, of course, I also share with the other mentors so that they can let you know what their thoughts are. Um, remain on the group and stay with us. We would announce when we would announce when the intermediate class would start. Okay, Lara, when I'm done. We will announce when the intermediate class will start. It's, I think it should be in sometimes in April or May. And also, um, we would like to get feedback on this class, what you think, what you learned. You can either, if it's like a very fantastic feedback, we would like if you can record a video of not more than two minutes and send to us, send it to my WhatsApp, my DM. 
and if you don't feel like doing a video you can type the message and um, send it to me with your picture so uh, we may post them on our social media handles and what have you so again of my average of 13 participants i am hoping that we will get get um quite some feedback from you guys regarding how the class went and what have you and like always i've said the whatsapp group will remain the microsoft teams chat will remain please feel free to continue to ask all your questions and um, what have you um and now you can stop sharing your screen um, Lara still wants to show us um, something too. Anna, please stop sharing your screen. <laughs>